Welcome to HQM Training Camp. In these videos, you will learn fundamental skills that you will need to be successful in HQM. Not only that, but the more you improve upon these basic skills and techniques, the easier it will be for you to learn more advanced moves in the future. Keep in mind that the only way to truly improve your skills in HQM is practice. Just having knowledge of a move or technique doesn't mean you'll be able to execute it perfectly and consistently in a live game. In these videos, I will be demonstrating different drills and tech that can help players develop their skills in a more controlled environment. Before we get started with the puck though, let's take a look at the nature of the controls. To start, the left and right mouse buttons control the camera. Left mouse button will make you look at the puck. If there are multiple pucks on the ice, it will look at one specific puck. We call this the god puck or the camera puck. Right mouse button, combined with mouse movement in any direction, will allow us to free look. As you've probably noticed, with the exception of using left or right mouse buttons, your camera is locked relative to the direction you're facing. If you've played first person games in the past, you'll also notice that the A and D keys turn your character left and right rather than straight, like the majority of other first person shooters. What this means is that you have a relatively wide turn radius. There are ways to tighten your turn radius with and without the puck, but those will be covered in another video. The second thing to take note of once you hit the ice is the concept of coasting. If you hold W until you get up to speed and then release the key, your forward momentum will let you glide, or coast. As you coast, you will gradually lose speed. Practice holding W to get up to top speed, coasting for a little, and then just tapping W to maintain your momentum. Next, we'll take a look at shift and control. The shift key has three functions. The first is stopping. Holding shift will bring you to a stop faster than pretty much anything else including the S key. The second function of shift is strafing. Holding shift and A or D will make you strafe to the left or right in a circle. While using this doesn't allow you full lateral movement, it can be useful for breaking away from a player you have collided with, as well as putting yourself in the way of an opposing player in order to take the body. The third function of the shift key is bracing for hits. Holding shift when another player tries to knock you over or out of position can make you a little less likely to end up like this. And I thought it touched, I saw it touch. Oh, oh. oh man, oh man. Traffic. Stepping up, crowd oh. While you can still end up getting knocked over while doing so, Holding shift when you see a player closing in for a hit will make you a much more difficult target overall. Obviously, the best solution is just to get out of the way, but sometimes you want to maintain your position in front of the net or along the boards, and just holding shift can be a great form of defense against big hits. The final key we'll be looking at is the control key. The control key can be compared to a slide in many other first person games. Similar to Apex Legends or Warzone, while sliding, you're able to turn your character while maintaining your course in a given direction. Unlike the games mentioned, however, you might fall on your face. You can stop this from happening by paying attention to the placement of your stick when you start your slide. If your stick is up in the air, there's nothing holding you up, and you'll fall forward. If your stick is too close to your feet when you begin the slide, you'll fall backwards. Practice sliding with your stick in different positions so you can figure out how it affects your slide. Sliding allows us to fluidly switch from skating forwards or back, sharpen our turns when we have the puck, and even do full 360s while still moving in our original direction. Now that we have that out of the way, let's move on to controlling the puck. The first drill is to simply start anywhere on the ice and push the puck into either net. Make an effort to push the puck on the forehand, as you will have an easier time carrying it on that side. Keep pushing pucks into the net until you can do it 5-10 to 10 times in a row without losing it.
focus on speed control and remember to utilize coasting while you do this. The purpose of this exercise is control, not speed. Once you feel like you've mastered pushing the puck in front of you, start getting a feel for turning with the puck. Start by only turning left, and focus on using the scroll wheel to make micro adjustments. Try to avoid using too much mouse movement to start. Keep practicing turning left until you're able to turn infinitely in a circle. Don't feel alarmed if this takes a little while, but keep practicing. You'll probably even have it pop up on your stick like this, too. Experiment with turning in both directions and get comfortable switching back and forth between curling left and right, and you'll feel much more comfortable when pucks are coming your way in a game. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on the ice.